Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem continuous subarray sum. We're given an integer array nums and we're given an integer k. We want to return true if there is a contiguous subarray of at least two elements that sums up to a multiple of k. If that's not the case though, then we're going to return false. So first, really quickly, what does that mean? Well, the best way to understand it is always with an example. Try not to spend too much time reading the description for these types of problems. Focus on the example. So we're given an integer k. Uh, this is the array nums. A subarray would look something like this, right? 2, 4. What's the sum of that subarray? 2 plus 4, which is 6. So of course, that sum of that subarray is a multiple of k. Uh, what are the multiples of k though? K in this case is six. Well, one thing they do mention in the fine print over here is that zero is always a multiple of K. So the multiples of this include zero, then six, then 12, then 18, et cetera, et cetera, right? So pretty basic math here. But how would we know that the sum of this particular subarray or any subarray is a multiple of K? Like what math formula can help us determine that? Uh, dividing is one way and then finding the remainder which can be done with the mod operation so in this case if we took the sum of this subarray we would get six modded by k k is also six in this case and that would give us zero so therefore zero is the remainder that means it is divisible by k therefore it means that this value is a multiple of k so pretty straightforward math here but what's not going to be straightforward is an efficient algorithm for this problem since we're dealing with subarrays the immediate thought though is definitely going to be let's try every single subarray right how many subarrays are there there's going to be uh, n subarrays starting at the first value, roughly n subarrays starting at the second value, et cetera, et cetera. So n times n is going to be n squared. That's how many subarrays there are. And to check the sum of each of those subarrays, you know, is it divisible by k? Uh, it's going to be, you know, the, the time complexity is going to be big O of n squared, right? We're limited by this brute force method because we have to take the sum of every subarray and then check if it's divisible by k. Now, before we actually jump into the optimal solution, let's just go down a couple train of thoughts that I had that actually did not lead to the solution, but maybe got kind of close to the solution. So to improve this over n squared, right, which would be, you know, checking this, then we check this subarray, then we check this subarray, first three, first four, first five values, and then start from here. Uh, you know, one way to optimize these types of problems a common way is usually sliding window. But in this case, a sliding window, you know, it's hard to figure out how that would work to make this more efficient, right? We, as we increase this, uh, you know, we want to check this subarray, right? Is this uh, divisible by K? First of all, it's only one element, but let's just check it anyway. 23 uh, modded by six is going to be five. So it's not divisible by K. So we want to, you know, let's say add more elements to it. So now we would consider this subarray, right? That's not going to be the solution either. So at that point, you know, what's the criteria to figure out whether, you know, we increase the window from the right side, or maybe we decrease the window from the left side, right? What exactly would be that criteria? It's hard to figure out because in this case, it doesn't really work. Well, consider this subarray. We know that this is not the solution, right? We need this to be divisible by K. How could we do that? Well, you know, we don't really know. It could be possible that adding an element to the right would then make the subarray divisible by k. Or it could be possible that removing an element from the left could make the subarray divisible by k, or maybe a little bit of both. We remove this and then add this value. In this case, that's exactly what we need to do. But how would we ever know that we need to do that without trying every single possibility, without doing basically the brute force solution, which is still n squared? So we do need to find something a little bit better. Another idea I had was consider this uh, subarray, right? It's 25. Mod that by k, which is 6. Uh, then we get a remainder of 1. Okay, so we know that we're, we don't exactly have the remainder, but we know that the remainder is 6. We have a remainder of 1. Therefore, if we got another subarray, that's, it would have to be contiguous, right? So this is our current subarray. We need a subarray starting at this element. 
something like this, or maybe this, or this, right? It needs to start here. If we could find a subarray like this one that had a remainder of five, then if we add this subarray with this one, then both of them combined must have a remainder of six. That's an idea I had, right? So we can have maybe a hash map that stores, you know, the sum of every single subarray and then do something kind of like the two sum problem where we just take the difference and store it in a hash map and then use that to you know compute the solution but even that actually won't work because to do that we would still end up with an n squared solution so that doesn't work either and this is the part where it gets kind of tricky you know if you went down those lines of thought which that last solution i was talking about is kind of like a prefix right so the prefix from here here here, etc. The way prefixes work, if we computed this sum, this sum, this, uh, etc, etc, right, the first four, and also the first five, if we had all of these prefixes computed, we could easily calculate any subarray in uh, this array, the sum of it, in O of one time. Let me tell you how. Basically, you know, we have this computed, right, This the sum of this, subtracted by the sum of this would give us the sum of these three values, right? But again, even using this approach and the approach that I was talking about where we calculate the difference and then try to find that target difference, that will still be n squared. But there is a way to still use this idea of prefix sums and get a solution that's actually big O of n. It's pretty tricky though, but the good thing is, once you see it, once I explain it to you, it's actually very simple to understand, but it's pretty difficult to come up with. I won't lie about that. So the easiest way to explain it to you is to actually show you. So one, we're gonna have a hash map here. The hash map key is going to be the remainder and the, uh, the value of the hash map is gonna be the index, the starting index. So let's actually just walk through it. So we start at the first value. What is the sum of this subarray so far? It's 23. We take. Uh, 23 modded by 6, we get 5. So 5 is the remainder, so we're going to add that to our hash map. So we take that remainder 5 and the index, which is 0, right, it's the first value, and add that to the hash map. So basically this represents we have a prefix with a remainder of 5 that starts, or actually that ends at index 1. Okay, then we add the second value to our total sum. So the prefix is 25. Mod that by 6, we would get 1 as the remainder and the index in this case is one because it's the next value. So keep doing this. So we add four to the total sum. We have 29, mod that by six. Now the remainder is once again five. So what does that mean in this case? Well, first we would try to add that to our hash map, right? Five as the key, the index is gonna be two in this case, but we can't have duplicates in a hash map, right? So these two have the same key. What does that mean? Is that useful for us? And it turns out that it is. So take a look at our so take a look at our values over here. We were at this point, uh, which corresponds to this, right? At, in, at the ending at index zero, we had a sum of 23, which had a remainder of five. But now we found a second array. That's this one, three values. It ends at index two. It also has a remainder of five. So since we looked at 23, we added enough values such that the remainder is now the exact same. How could it be possible that the remainder is the exact same? It can only be possible if the values we added since we saw 23, these values that we added total up to a multiple of k. That sounds more complicated than it is, but take a look. We first had 23, right? We added, and by the way, the remainder of that was five. Then we added a multiple of k, which is six, right? Two plus four is six. Now we have 29. The remainder of that is also five. Of course, we could have added 12. We could have added 18. We could have added any multiple of six, and we would have also gotten a value that has a remainder of five. Basically what this tells us, if we have found a multiple uh, prefixes with the exact same remainder, that means we've found a subarray, in this case, this one, that is divisible by k, that's a multiple of k. But the only thing we have to verify, and the reason why we're actually storing the index here, which you might be wondering, is because this will tell us, is the subarray at least two values long? In this case, the first prefix ended at index zero. The second prefix ends at index two. If we take the difference of these two, we get two. Therefore, the subarray is two values long, which we can confirm, right? Just by looking over here, of course, this is two values long. 
wrong. What would not have been valid, though, is what if uh, this 2 was just a 6, right? Then we would say, okay, this is the subarray, right? Can we return this? No, because it only has one value in it. We need to have at least two values in the subarray. Okay, so that's good. But one edge case you might be wondering about, what about zero values, which are always a multiple of k? We can't have negative values in the input array, but we could have zero. Suppose we had a zero here, right? Well, then that would be kind of the same thing, right? This subarray itself does not count because even though it is divisible by k technically by this uh, statement here it's only one value long but if we actually had two zeros consecutively in a row this would be a valid solution actually if we had two consecutive zeros then we have a subarray that's divisible by k so then we could return true now in this case though if we did take this subarray the sum would still be 23 we'd mod that by 6 and then we'd see okay uh, it's 5, right? And then we'd see that there's already a 5 in here. Okay, great. But there's one last thing that I didn't talk about before we can write up the code. We're actually going to initialize our hash map with one thing, the value 0 and the index negative 1. Why are we doing this? Well, suppose we, instead of having a 23 over here, we had a 24 value. Then we'd say, okay, 24 modded by 6 is 0, right? So what we normally want to do is add that to our hash map, right? Take the uh, remainder as 0, the index as as zero because it's the first value but before we'd even do that we would check well that already exists in our hash map right basically by doing this we implied that there's a subarray over here of length one that is basically a value of zero, right? At index negative one. But the key point here is that we don't want to return true yet because remember this subarray only has one value in it. By adding this entry into our hash map, we will ensure that we don't return true if the first value is a multiple of K. Because what we're gonna see now is that, okay, the index of the entry that we wanna add right now is zero and the uh, previous entry that had the same remainder is negative one, therefore the, the the length of this subarray is only one it's not two so we can't return true yet so that's kind of how we handle uh, that edge case here but there's probably multiple ways to handle i think this is just probably the most elegant way to do that i hope this makes sense but now let's code it up by the way time complexity yes is big o of n because we're just computing the prefixes though we are using a hash map so the memory complexity is also big O of N. So now let's code it up. And while this solution is difficult to come up with, I hope it's not too difficult to understand at least the whole prefix math portion of it. I think that's not too crazy. Uh, but so we have our hash map. We're just going to call it remainder. This is how we're going to initialize it. Like I mentioned, we're basically mapping each remainder to the ending uh, index of that you know, subarray. We're also going to keep track of whatever the total happens to be initially. We'll just say it's zero. We're going to iterate through uh, nums, but we want to actually enumerate it, which is kind of just a shorthand way of getting the index and the value at the same time, uh, because we are going to need that index if we add it to the hash map. So we want to add that value to our total. Our total is basically our prefix so far. We wanna calculate the remainder next. So we can take the total, mod it by a K, which is our input parameter, and we'll get that remainder. So there's two cases now. Is our remainder already in the hash map or is it not in the hash map? And by the way, remember we initialized our hash map with a zero. So if we found a, a subarray, that has a remainder of zero, we've basically found the solution as long as the length of it is greater than one. But let's start with if a R is not in remainder. And the else case, uh, the reason I'm putting the opposite in the else case is because if, it's, if it is in the remainder, we also want to check a second thing. We want to check else if uh, the current index minus remainder of R index right? Because this is also an index, remember, that's in our hash map. So if the length of this subarray is greater than one, that's why we're putting this in the else case, because we want to evaluate that this is not true and that this also is true. So first though, if it's not in the remainder, that's the simple case, because this, that means it's the first time we're seeing it. And it's also not a zero. So we can say remainder with key value r is going to be equal is ending at this index i else case is basically else if this that means we basically found the solution that means we found a subarray that is divisible by k and the length of it is greater than one so we don't actually have to return that subarray we can just return true meaning we found a solution it's really as simple as that 
Uh, once the loop exits though, that means we didn't find a solution. So in that case, we will have to return false. Okay, so now let's run the code to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's very efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.